Again, we thank you for joining us on our wonderful day in the Lord broadcast. Uh, we've just began a series on the promises found in the Bible for you and I, and we've looked at a couple about Jesus. We'll look at a third one today in the book of Luke chapter 1. And this is a familiar passage to most of us, starting with verse 30. When uh, when the angel comes, the angel Gabriel comes to Mary and brings some promises to her that are applicable to you and I as well. It says in verse 30, the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. So here, you can imagine, Mary is probably 14, 15, 16 years old at the oldest. Uh, she's just a young gal by our standards. And this angel shows up and says, here is this miraculous thing that's going to happen in you. You found favor with God, and you are going to have a child, and his name will be Jesus. And then he then he talks about the promise. Who is this Jesus that she is going to give birth to? This Jesus, he says, will be great, verse 32, and will be called the Son of the Most High. He is going to be great by any standard, ultimately the greatest uh, who ever's ever walked the earth and who's ever lived. And it says he will be great and he'll be called the son of the most high. So as Mary contemplates all this, as she begins to think about this, the angel is not saying she's going to have a, a wonderful world leader, some brilliant person, some rich person, anything like that. He is going to be the son of the most high. He is going to be the son of God. That this is the promise being given to her that, of course, is applicable to you and I. And the Lord God will give him the, the throne of his father, David. Now, I want you to note as we read through these verses how this is the very fulfillment uh, to the promise in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7 that we looked at a couple of days ago. It's, it's almost like, uh, like Gabriel is, is quoting from Isaiah saying, here's what was promised long ago, hundreds of years ago, is now being fulfilled in you, Mary, at this time. So notice the similarities. He's going to be called the Most High, and in Isaiah, he's the wonderful counselor, mighty God, Prince of Peace. Uh, he is the Lord God, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. Remember in Isaiah, he would sit on David's throne, ruling over the earth. Now verse 33, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end, just as Isaiah had prophesied and, and promised. He will reign over the house of, of Jacob. He will reign over the house of Israel, and his kingdom will be perpetual, and I have no end. So biblically speaking, the, the kingdom age, Jesus will reign over the earth during the kingdom age. When that kingdom age comes to an end on earth, it rolls straight over to the eternal kingdom, which will last forever and ever. So in a sense, the kingdom age is two parts. Uh, one part where Jesus is is on the earth ruling over a world that not yet fully regenerated. Sin still exists. People still die. Uh, people still must choose for or against Christ. But at the end of that age, uh, all those who know him will be taken into the kingdom age. And so his kingdom will be forever and ever. That's his promise here. Verse 34, Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? Now, this blew Mary away as it would you and I. How could this possibly take place since, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not married, I don't have a man? How could this happen? And the angel answered, verse 35, and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. There's the promise of God. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And, and for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. What a set of promises Mary is being given here that, that will change the world. Uh, it, will, it will change everything because God is becoming man and he's coming to the earth first as a baby. He grows up without sin. He goes to the cross. He dies for us. And, and it's for all these reasons that this child that she's going to give birth to will be called the Son of God. And he's not simply called the Son of God. He is the Son of God. What, what a glorious thought that is, isn't it? To realize this promise given hundreds and hundreds of years ago, almost 2,000 years ago now, uh, maybe even even longer than that, 
was given to Mary to, uh, to say this one was coming who would ultimately be the savior of all humanity. That is the promise about Christ that uh, we ought to love and appreciate and embrace.